All right, you guys. So in this video, what I wanted to do is um, show you uh, what I've been able to do or what I've seen uh, when using the iPhone uh, 13 Pro with its built-in LiDAR compared to data collection with a handheld, you know, uh, Ferro Freestyle uh, 2 scanner. Um, so the first uh, portion of the video, I am about to show you the um, data capture with the phone. And then the second portion will be the data capture with the actual freestyle, and then we'll go through um, what the data actually looks like. All right, so here's uh, the iPhone 13 Pro with the Polycam app. Fire up the actual application, step back, and start recording. So uh, this is a relatively popular app that you see in the App Store that uh, kind of specifies that it can use the LiDAR on the iPhone that have the LiDAR on them, which means iPhone, I think, 13 Pro, Pro Max, the iPad Pro of uh, 2021, 2022, I don't know what the generation numbers there are, but uh, it makes you feel like it's actually scanning. So I've been playing with this for a couple of days now and it does do a relatively interesting job with the actual point cloud data collection. Uh, the fact is a full-blown uh, scanner that I compare this data set to afterwards um, compared it to a Ferro Freestyle 2 uh, that generates the points based on how it actually strikes the surface and records them over here it's generating the mesh, as you can see in the app, and then the mesh is recreated into the points afterwards. So it's just a different way of uh, calculating a point cloud. But uh, I guess the purpose of the video is really seeing how this actually recreates the same space that a commercial uh, scanner, handheld scanner, uh, records and what it looks like if it's you know, a uh, 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 reasonable comparison or if it's really not a very reasonable tool to utilize for uh, scanning and surveying purposes. Uh, I'll scan down, down here and we will stop here. There we go. Stop. Uh, you always have to uh, optimize. So if you see that this is what the data actually kind of looks like when you have collected it, we'll hit the process button. And what it does is hopefully it gives you better results on the data that you're about to export and analyze. So what I am planning on doing is um, next step, once this process is, we will export this data as a last file to um, a cloud drive, in my case, OneDrive and then just read it into a uh, Faro scene and see what we can do. So this is almost finished processing. All right, it's done. So it looks relatively okay. So now next, we'll just hit the upload find the LAS file format, find my OneDrive, and then just upload. And depending on the size of it, it can take a little time, but this wasn't a big file, so. All right, so next we'll just go to the program and um, have a look at what it looks like. All right, now in this video, what I'm doing is I'm uh, recording the screen on the same phone that I used uh, to capture uh, the data with a built-in LiDAR, but I'm now connected to a full-blown Ferro Freestyle 2 uh, handheld scanner. And what I'll do is I'll just start the scan of the same area. All right, here we go. So, same table, same objects on the tables over here with the same uh, 
targets on the surface also. Box. The preview obviously looks different, completely different application, different way that the data is being captured, of course. Let's see, can I get the back of this box? Let's go. Oh, it's filling in a little bit, okay. Let's grab the same area-ish. The ground. And let's go also here. Maybe we'll grab the back of these stakes here too. Okay, that's it. So data recording has been stopped. You can optimize through the Freestyle app on the iPhone in this case also, but it isn't completely necessary. Now the next step is really just hitting the bottom right button where it says save to USB with uh, mm, a USB drive plugged into the actual Freestyle unit. All right, so now that we have the data from the Federal Freestyle tool cap, let me slip in the thumb drive. And what I'll do is I'll actually copy this out. Uh, rather than working on it, I could from the thumb drive, I'll obviously just hit a copy and uh, dump it into my folder where I have my project. So we'll go paste over here. There we go. So now if I open up scene, we should be able to just find that project and we will process it. So here's the project. Uh, just for fun, this is what it looks like before processing. So you see it's relatively clean, but still noisy data, of course. I mean, these are just large pixels, which dots, which will be probably gone when you process. So let's go into processing and process everything out. And this takes a couple of minutes sometimes. So I'll speed up the process uh, or the yeah, yeah, time of processing here for the sake of the length of the video. All right, looks like the data is processed. Let's look at it again. Cleaner, nicer, I mean, I guess expected, but uh, let's see what the data looks like when we import the actual iPhone scan. So uh, I believe I have to actually unzip uh, Polycam. Here, oh, it's already, I already unzipped it. Okay, so there's the file that was captured by the phone. You have to unzip it because uh, it comes zipped from um, being uploaded to the OneDrive location. So let's do this. Let's go import. And this is an unscripted video. I have not tried this before. So uh, for the benefit of you guys seeing uh, how I struggle or don't. So let's go here. Open LIS file. So just like that, I see that there's something now residing in my point cloud um, with a freestyle. Looks like it's to scale, but it's at the 90 degree L, or I guess degree uh, offset here. That's okay. All right, let's see if we can, uh, scene is uh, showing this data as unprocessed. You can tell by the broken circle around it. Let's see if scene will let me actually process this data. And uh, let's see, it might not because it's not native, but I will not run any of the filters because I really don't want to get rid of any points. We just want it to be happy. So we'll hit start. It wasn't that much data if you look at it. Uh, apparently it didn't fail. So how much was it? One megabyte. So it's not that big. All right. So if we view it now, 
it'll be optimized a little bit better for uh, processing. Typically, I would level this data, and to level the data, um, you just need to level it with three clicks. But because it looks like it's relatively level, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and try to register this thing. So let's try register. Let's do top view. We'll do, go very low reliability. Subsampling probably higher because the data is relatively low density on the iPhone. Let's see if it works. Hey, look at that. Well, it looks like it placed it to within seven millimeters, it looks like it. So, okay. This is the iPhone cloud. This is the freestyle cloud. They are on top of each other. It's not perfect, but again, that's just because we did uh, top view based registration. So top, from a top view, we, sh we should really have only yep, one wall over here. So this looks like it's relatively okay. So let's see if we can do a cloud to cloud to refine this a little bit. Because you can tell that there's definitely a difference between the data. So let's do this. Cloud to cloud. Uh, I don't know. We'll do high subsampling, maximum search distance. That's okay. We'll adjust this as needed. Let's try it. No way. First try. Okay, this is already better. Better too. So let's let's do this for real. Let's get a clipping box going. And let's go this way, not too thick a slice. Well, yes, <laughs> you can tell that the outline, so we're, we're looking at, there's the iPhone and there's the actual hard scan. So that iPhone, I would expect it to be, um, uh, as I call it, lumpier because of the fact that it generates the point cloud from the actual uh, mesh, hence it's rounded off, but it's not horrible. Obviously, there's a difference between the surfaces. You'll notice. So come on, but it's not that that big a difference over here, especially on a very flat surface. Now the chair, which wasn't ideal, definitely looks weird and lumpy. But you can see that the cross sections, oops, too close over here. Once again, you have the point cloud of the actual iPhone data versus the point cloud here we go, versus the point cloud of the true scanner. It's doable. Isn't something that you would want to you would want to survey with, but the difference between these guys is let me do a measurement, really just a very arbitrary measurement. Four hundredths of a foot. I mean, you know, for what it is, that's pretty darn close. I know it's not perfectly flat, but it's pretty close. Let's try this. Let's go from here to here. Yep, about four hundredths of a foot. So about a centimeter. Looseness overall. That's pretty good. Now, of course, that's comparing a data set that's this sparse to a data set that is incredibly dense, you know, and it being calculated from 
a mesh rather than from the actual points. So at the end of the day, it does seem to be working. It isn't very dense, but you could use that phone with the Polycam app to maybe fill in some information that wasn't there in the first place. Um, if you're not going to be designing off of it, but uh, maybe for the sake of, you know, clarity of what it looks like. Um, all right. I hope this was a useful video for a few of you guys who have the means to compare the two uh, or even three scanners. Um, if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, leave them below.